swift water rescues. Magnetic effects are causing significant inundation along tributaries, including flooding exceeding four feet deep at the North Carolina 18 slash of 64 bridge, blocking the primary roadway connecting Morganton and Lenore. Wind advisory now in effect until 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time this afternoon. About three inches of running water on this road. What? South winds 15 to 25 miles per hour with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Yep, sounds good. Out. Say again. Sorry, hot mic. Some crazy stuff. We're gonna let this one be, bro. Yeah. We got broken poles right here. Having a solid communication plan is going to be essential if you're going to participate in any kind of search and rescue operations during the emergency. And it's also going to be essential for your own survival for you and your family. So while Hurricane Helene was making its way through Virginia, I lost communication with my brother and his wife in the mountains of Tennessee. And so I decided to go down and check on them to make sure they are all right. I was getting lots of reports of a lot of destruction down there. And in fact, I actually had to call a neighboring 911 one center just to find out exactly what was going on in their area. So I ended up calling my brother-in-law. He dropped everything and we started putting together a plan to go down and uh, make sure that they're okay and check on them. And part of my responsibility was coming up with our communication package, which is pretty simple. It essentially uh, was basically two GRMS radios. I used the Radiodity GM30 uh, radios, which are pretty cheap on Amazon. They're kind of equivalent to the Bofang, just your typical handheld GRMS radios. I had the radios pre-programmed and we used these radios to communicate with each other while we were kind of digging and cutting with the chainsaws and kind of making our way in on the road uh, that my brother and lived on. And what's really interesting is that these radios weren't just essential for us to be able to communicate because we, a lot of times we weren't even in visual range. I was hiking up in deeper onto the road, trying to get ahead of the game at the same time, marking areas that needed to be dug out, neighbors that needed to be dug out, elderly folk and, and people like that. And so I was kind of prioritizing uh, the people that I wanted my brother-in-law and um, uh, my nephew to cut out while I was continuing the search. And so it came in really handy and allowed us to um, essentially just move and communicate very efficiently. Now, what's really interesting is that while we were there, we actually received an NOAA alert. So we were also scanning the NOAA uh, weather channels and one of the alerts came through that a potential dam break was going to happen and we were actually down river from the dam so that gave us a little bit of information and it was very essential for us because if that dam had broken it could have really put us in a sticky situation so uh, communications is super key and what I want to do in this video is just kind of go over the basics of GMRS radio communications so that um, you can have a, just a better understanding of what it is and how it might come in handy for you during an emergency. So GMRS stands for General Mobile Radio Service. It's a licensed radio service, meaning you've got to pay $10 for a license, and that license lasts 10 years. Now, the reason behind this licensing is that with GMRS, you are allowed to transmit at much higher power levels than if you were to use, say, the FRS radios that you would buy at Walmart. FRS stands for Family Ready uh, family radio service and those radios uh, communicate and transmit at a much lower power. So you're looking at 0.5 watts to around 2 watts for those radios. So the higher the wattage, the more distance that you can transmit. So what I want to do is just go through a list of terminology just to help you get started with GRMS communications. So the first thing I want to cover is going to be squelch. So squelch is an adjustable setting on most radios uh, that basically mutes background noise on incoming transmissions. So it's basically a setting that says, hey, how much static do you want to allow with the communication that's coming into your radio? So if somebody is, say, deep in the mountains and they're trying to communicate with you, you might hear a lot of static. You might actually not even get 
uh, or hear them at all because your squelch setting could be set to a point where it doesn't allow really any background noise um, at all. So think of it as those old television sets back in the day, you would turn your television knob and it'd be all staticky and you get a signal, right? And the stronger the signal, the less of that static noise that would hear. Well, squelch filters that out. So in a scenario where you have somebody deep in the mountains and they're trying to communicate with you, you might need to turn your squelch off and hold your radio up and really try to listen and see if uh, they're trying to communicate with you. That could actually happen. Um, I usually keep my setting around three. It seems to be a pretty good um, everyday setting. So some other things uh, to go over with the, these radios. So all the radios that I've seen so far, the Radioddities and uh, the Bofang handheld radios, is they have two main operating modes. So the first mode is going to be channel mode, which is your most common mode. This is going to be where you plug in the typical channel, right? So on GRMS, you have uh, 30 channels. So one through 22 is going to be your typical channels that you would use. You know, you're going to set up, say, channel 17 on one radio, and then you're going to put channel 17 on all the other radios so that you can communicate uh, with one another. And then uh, channels 23 through 30 are pre-programmed repeater channels. Now we'll get into those later, but all you need to know for now is that as long as you're using channels one through 22, you should be uh, good to go. Um, so the other mode is gonna be frequency mode. So frequency mode uh, is where you can actually use the keypad on the radio to actually type in a frequency. Uh, this could be a ham radio frequency. This could be fire EMS frequency. It can be just about any typical frequency uh, that are in use out there. And you, while you won't be able to communicate on those frequencies with most of these radios, you will be able to listen in. And so what I ended up doing is plugging in frequencies for local fire and EMS so that I could hear what's going on while I was down in Tennessee and actually North Carolina. So it came in really handy. Uh, when I was in North Carolina, I was also able to plug in a ham radio uh, repeater channel and just kind of listen to the communication to see what was going on. So it comes in very, very handy for that. Um, and then, of course, if you're doing any kind of uh, custom channel settings for GRMS, you can obviously type in uh, a, on the keypad here a GMRS frequency. Um, and set up some other settings. And so frequency mode is kind of what lets you type in frequencies, uh, whereas channel mode is what's gonna really just get you started out of the box and let you communicate, start communicating right away. So those are the two uh, kind of main modes that you're gonna see uh, when you start operating with these radios. It's super basic, you stay on channel mode, that's probably gonna be where you spend most of your time. Now there are a couple other uh, things that um, are important just to mention with GMRS radio communications. And that's gonna be the CTCSS and the DCS, um, basically the, the squelching codes uh, for these radios. So CTCSS stands for Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System. I know that's a big mouthful. And DCS stands for Digital Coded Squelch. And what this lets you do is you can kind of put in, and we call these privacy codes, okay? And it lets you uh, say, um, basically communicate and only listen to certain people that have these codes. And so if I program all my radios to channel 17, anybody with channel 17 can communicate and listen to our communications, right? So they could interrupt our communication. However, if I put in a CTCSS code or a DCS code, um, then at that point, the only people that can listen are the people that have those codes. Now, those co these codes are common. You don't get to just kind of come up with your own secret code here. There are a certain frequency, um, and of course, DCS is digital, so you're going to have um, a set of these that you are able to choose from. So what it'll do is I will, say, put all my radios on channel 17, and then I will pick uh, one of the many CTCSS codes out there plug those in on all of our radios so that when I'm broadcasting on channel 17, it's also gonna broadcast a little tone that you can't hear, which is gonna open up the speakers on the other radios. So that means the radios uh, that also have that code will be able to listen uh, to our communication. Now, somebody that's on channel 17 that does not have the code will still be able to listen to us, but they won't be able to broadcast that code unless they know what code they're using. Now, of course, I think there's like 30 codes, and so they could probably guess and pick which one, uh, but most of the time that's not a problem. People aren't generally out there trying to purposely interrupt other people's communication. So 
again, CTCSS and DCS allow you uh, to kind of fine tune the channel that you're using so that only your group, only the people that you're communicating with on that channel will be able to uh, broadcast and transmit um, on that channel and uh, hear those communications. So the other thing um, that I want to talk about briefly is NOAA. So all these radios uh, come with NOAA uh, built in. There's going to be a button that you're going to push in order to turn that on and start scanning for NOAA. And NOAA is more than just weather. Like I said, we got emergency alerts, all kinds of information. When I was uh, driving down uh, in the hurricane to uh, Tennessee and North Carolina, um, and then, of course, there's repeaters, right? And so repeaters, again, I'm not going to get into super big detail on repeaters. This is just a general overview for GRMS just to help you get started. For, so repeaters basically allow you to um, listen on one frequency and transmit on another, okay? And the reason why this is beneficial is that I could have, let's just say, a, a base station on, up on a mountain somewhere, just maybe even a handheld radio for that matter. Some handheld radios have the capability to act as repeaters. You could put this really high up on a mountain somewhere, and I will uh, program this to receive a transmission on one frequency, and it's going to broadcast out on another. And so it's repeating the signal, right? It's repeating the transmission. And so what this allows you to do is just communicate uh, in further distances. So when you go to, say, channel 17, and you start talking on channel 17, you're sending and receiving on the same frequency. But when you use repeater channels or repeater uh, configured frequencies, um, you're going to be transmitting on one frequency and listening on another. And so um, it quite literally is a kind of a, a way to extend the range because I might only be able to reach five miles and maybe that repeater is four miles, but that repeater could be super powerful and it could broadcast out, you know, 50 or even 100 miles depending on line of sight and where people are communicating. With this handheld radio, um, using the repeater here locally, I am actually uh, was able to talk to somebody that was 70 miles away. And this is just a five watt radio, uh, just to give you a kind of an example of how um, useful repeaters are. And you can usually get on the internet and find the repeaters in your area, area pretty, uh, pretty easily. I was able to find a couple around here that are pretty active. So as far as antennas go, I like to keep things simple. I purchased my antennas online pre-made. And of course, you can get as nerdy as you want to get and actually make your antennas and things like that. But I like to buy antennas all ready to go. You can get special mounts called NMO mounts, which allows you to basically screw an antenna onto a pre-installed base. And there's a wide selection of these kinds of antennas available. And they just plug right into the back of the radio. I don't really get too crazy on the antennas. I keep it simple. I actually use a dual band um, antenna, a pretty reasonably priced one, I believe it. I purchased it for, I think, under $30 on Amazon. And this is the antenna that I use on my roof with my mobile unit, which is what I'm using as a base station here uh, at the cabin downstairs in our talk. So um, keeping it simple is really important. Again, you can get as nerdy as you want, but I, I like to keep things simple and I just buy the antennas um, already tuned for what I want to use them for. Well, folks, that is a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching this intro to GRMS. Now, folks, remember you can get as deep as you want to get into communications. You can go down the rabbit hole. You can get super nerdy about it, but it really boils down to an emergency. You're going to want to have a super simple plan and GRMS lets you keep it simple. You plug in uh, the frequency or the the channel that you want to use, the privacy codes that you want to use on that channel. Make sure those are all set up on all the radios you're going to use and you're going to be good to go. No fuss, no muss. And that's really, really important is keeping it simple in the field. You don't want to be messing around uh, with all the technicalities that radios could provide if you really wanted to go down that path. Now, I'm going to be doing some videos on how to program uh, some of these radios like the GM30, the GM30 Plus, and some other radios that you, I have. I'm also going to be showing you how I have my talk set up so that if there's an emergency locally, we'll be able to communicate effectively. So be looking out for those if you uh, subscribe to the channel. And as usual, stay consistent, be diligent, and I'll see you in the next video.